The 2023 Tour de France saw the first start in the Basque Country since 1992, and the opening weekend looked more like the classic San Sebastian than the Tour. Stage one started in the capital of the Basque Country, Bilbao. Adam Yates snapping up the yellow jersey ahead of his brother. Adam, first amongst men, and here he comes. Oh, historic, brotherly one and two, absolutely magnificent. It's when it's a stage in a tour for anyone who can make a career, and to do so, take yellow and also have your brother on the, uh, you know, on the second step is a real special moment. Stage two would have a category two climb just before the finish, so it looks set to be another selective group contesting the fight for the stage win. But Lafay has it, Lafay has it, and Cofidis in the drop. Victor Lafay would take Cofidis' first victory at the Tour since 2009. Wout van Aert just missed out and showed his frustration, very much to the amusement of the UAE duo. The next couple of days saw the first chances for the fast men. Jasper Philipsen didn't need a second invitation, taking two stage wins in a row. It didn't take long for us to get to the first mountain stage of this year's Tour. Stage 5 would be the earliest there has been a Category 1 climb in the Tour's history. Jai Hindley, stage winner, leader of the Tour de France. Jai Hindley would take victory and the yellow jersey, but it was what happened behind which got everyone talking. Jonas Vinyagor hitting out first and landing the first blow in this titanic battle. Oh, and Mingago goes! That's absolutely fantastic, and there's nothing that Pogaccio can do about it. Jonas said he felt really good, so I tried to, uh, yeah, just just set a good pace, and then after a little while, he, he took off. Tade Pogaccio would fight back the next day and take victory, but crucially, some of the time back. Today, Pogaccio, present and correct, the Tour de France is on. Sweet, sweet revenge view. I feel uh, a little bit relieved and uh, yeah, I feel uh, much better now. The gap would close to just 25 seconds. The race was on. Bordeaux for many is considered a sprinter's city and with a chance at history it meant all eyes were on Mark Cavendish. Could he make it that 35th win? Cavendish comes into the frame, he's shooting up from the outside, I can't believe it, I cannot believe it, it's going to happen, it's going to be 35, oh, it's going to be heartbreak on the line, it is. For a moment, it looked like he had done it. I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed there, like really majorly disappointed, but we keep on trying, you know. From near adulation, one day to heartbreak the next. A touch of wheels on a mundane stretch of road saw not only Cavendish's race over, but potentially his career. Lidl Trek had their win, and Mars Pitherson, the former world champion, on a hilly circuit that he would have loved, showed his strength, showed his speed. Mads Pedersen would stop Jasper Philipsen's stranglehold on the sprint victories and win for the Lidl Trek outfit. The Puy de Dom, the centrepiece of this year's race, is a UNESCO site and a climb which is steeped in history. Michael Woods, a perfectly judged ride. He got himself into the breakaway over the rise as others fall. This man has dominated. Michael Woods takes the day. The riders and staff alike were glad when they finally arrived at the rest day. The first week had it all, and the GC battle was perfectly poised heading into the final two weeks. Peo Bilbao, Jasper Philipsen and Jon Izagiri would take the following three stages. The latter taking solo victory after a hard-fought stage to get in the break. Anyway, with two stages we are already super happy. The mighty Alps would now be on the doorstep and Ineos Grenadiers would win back to back on stages 13 and 14. Mikhail Kwiatkowski would take an impressive victory up the Grand Colombier. Carlos Rodriguez would cement a stellar couple of days for the British outfit with a win at the Morzine Le Porte du Soleil. And Carlos Rodriguez wants to make it two out of two for the Ineos Grenadiers. It's glory to Rodriguez. You must be absolutely delighted. 
Yeah, pretty special that, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th I just think for somebody riding his first tour and to win from a GC group like that, I think it's pretty special. The battle for the top two steps on the podium would still be raging behind. Pogaccia tried to make time, but he was held up by the crowds and the traffic on the Col de Juplan as he attempted to go over the top and gap Vinugo. Oh, no, no! And it's not the fans, it's the motorbikes! Woutpols would be victorious on the foothills of the Mont Blanc. Further back, Pogaccia and his UAE teammates were once again trying to make the difference before the time trial. Pogaccia is the man that falls over the top, of course he does, and here he goes, he's rested up, he's kept the powder dry. They are locked together as if they are on a tow rope here. The race of truth and stage 16 of the 2023 Tour de France. The nickname for the time trial could not have been more accurate. And here is the man who won last year, putting this year's tour to bed. A time trial that would go down in history. It was only in 1961 where Jacques Anquetil has a rider claimed more seconds per kilometre in a time trial. Clearly today you were the strongest. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, feeling great today. Uh, I think it's the best time trial I've ever done. Could Pogaccia muster any sort of comeback in the days to come? If Tare Pogaccia needed a couple of days to regroup, that is certainly not what he got. The race would go over the Col de la Lose, the highest point in this year's edition, and on the lower slopes, any chance of a fight back was lost. It's a huge gap. Sepkus comes to the front and guides Jonas Vingago to an even greater gap. Barring an incident or accident, surely the GC would go to Jonas for the second time in his career. Tali Pogacar, you're a hero, my friend. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Tali, how are you? <laughs> I'm dead. It wasn't just the killer bees that were celebrating that evening. Felix Gall would take only his second World Tour victory with a win on the Queen stage. And that is a serious result for Felix Gall. Wonderful. Everyone needed a well-earned rest after the brutality of the previous days. And it would be a double for the breakaway and almost a double for Quickstep and Kasper Asgreen. But it would be Matej Mohoric taken to the top step and after, he would give one of the most honest interviews of this year's tour. The whole day I just wanted to give my best. I didn't... I always know that I can win a Tour de France stage because I already, I already won two, no? So I know I'm, I'm strong enough, but I know so are other 150 guys. I'm not the only one who can win a Tour de France stage and every single rider at this moment would deserve a win because I saw the faces in Gropeto the other day on Col de la Loz and you just feel, um, you feel, uh, like you know what everyone's, what everyone else is going through, no? And and you would like to, because I know how much it can change your life. A Tour de France win. I wish that everybody could win a Tour de France stage, but it's just not possible, and that's cruel, no? Ale, Thibaut Pino. The Vosges region, the region where Pinot grew up and trained, would also be where his penultimate day as a Tour de France racer would take place. And the crowds would be roaring him on. The fervour, the fans and the fight he's showing for them. Yes, there's a lot of people. It's true that it's here that everything started for me in 2012, when I won my first race in Partey de Belfort. Forcément, il y, a, il y a beaucoup de symboles et euh, voilà, finir, euh, finir mon histoire avec le Tour de France ici, pour moi, c'est presque un rêve. Ouais. All the anger and relief was evident on Pogacar's face. Redemption for the young Slovenian taking the stage ahead of Jonas. Pogacar running on pride, passion and producing a performance. Though Jonas couldn't be disheartened, he had successfully defended his title. Crossing the line in the yellow, though, after one of the best time trial performances in history. A mountain demonstration on the race's hardest climb. Aggressive front foot racing and management. He's done it again. 
The final day started with the now annual procession through Paris. This provided an opportunity to celebrate the previous three weeks before the final sprint. Philipson would be going for his fifth win at this year's tour, but many others would try and spoil the party. It's going to be between the bear and the... Oh, four of the bear! And Jordi Mayos causes the chaos. That is magic. All right, hands go as Jordi Mayos. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, walking away with the yellow jersey for the second year in a row. The one and only Jonas Vingegaard.